What's going on guys? My name is Kevin Nguyen from Triple Threat Customs and today I'm going to be showing you how to airbrush the most realistic bullet holes you've ever seen, step by step. I don't want to waste any of your time so let's go ahead and jump on right into it. First you want to pull out the outer part of your bullet hole stencil. You can either find a bullet hole outline on Google or draw it yourself, I drew it myself, and then use the cutting machine. If you do not have a cutting machine, you can also draw and cut it out on some masking tape. Next, place that vinyl sticker on your shoe. Use the scraper tool to ensure that the sticker is on there real good. I like to use a heat gun to heat it up to make sure that it's on there as tight as possible because you do not want any of your paint bleeding through. Tape off any part of your shoe you don't want painted. Then airbrush the bullet hole black. You want at least three layers with sufficient drying time in between each layer. After the paint has fully dried, pull out the circle sticker and place it in the center. This will act as the bullet hole. To prevent the next color from bleeding underneath the vinyl, I like to airbrush a thin layer of the color underneath, in this case black, so that any of the pockets of air between the sticker and the surface gets filled. Next, I use Angelus Metallic Silver, please sponsor me, and paint in multiple layers by hand. At first I try thinning out the paint and applying the silver with my airbrush. However, due to the tiny metallic particles in the paint, it always tends to clog up my airbrush. So if anybody knows of a way to fix this issue, please, please, please share that in the comments below. Once the silver is dry, I shade in either dark gray or black to give the ripped metal a 3D effect. Think of a light source coming from above. The bottom parts of the metal pieces will have the least amount of light reflecting from it and therefore will be darker than the rest. It should look something like this. On the flip side, the top parts of the metal pieces will have the most light reflecting off of it. So for these areas, I use white. Try your best not to overdo the shading or highlighting because you do not want to cover up the metallic shine of the silver. After that's dried for at least 20 to 30 minutes, you can take off the tape shield, but do it slowly, slowly, so you don't peel up any of the paint underneath. Some people might say that this looks good enough, but I say, hell no. I want this to look as realistic as possible. So it's time to airbrush in the drop shadows. Take the other inner piece of vinyl sticker and lay it directly on top of the work that you just did. But listen, make sure it's 100% dried. You do not want to ruin all of your hard work up until this point. Offset the drop shadow of the ripped metal, but do not overdo it. The shadow is not supposed to be completely black. And that's it. That's all the steps. Here's the final result of what it looks like. This is actually the very first YouTube video that I have dropped on this channel. And so if you found any value in this and you would like to see more content like this, please, please, please like, comment, subscribe, share, do all that good stuff. Help a brother out. You already know. This is Kevin from Triple Threat Customs. Thank you so much for tuning in today and I'll see you in the next video. Deuces.